Welcome to part 11 of our series, Secrets of Glessner House. Today, we are going to look at the dovecoat, a rarely seen architectural feature of houses in Chicago. In addition to the four members of the Glessner family and their eight live-in servants, the house was also home to nine pairs of doves. There are over 300 varieties of doves and pigeons, so it is not known exactly what variety resided in the dovecote. The dovecote was positioned above the hayloft door on the 18th street side of the house. This also placed it near the male servants, as they would have been responsible for its maintenance. The earliest known dovecotes were constructed in Egypt and Iran, where this example is located. In addition to eggs and the birds themselves, an important byproduct was the droppings, which were used as fertilizer. This large example is located at the Manoir d'Anjou in the Normandy region of France. Dovecotes were a sign of status, as only members of the nobility were allowed to keep birds. The Manoir was a building that architect Henry Hobson Richardson knew well, and he used elements of its design in Glessner House. Dovecotes were also common in England. On the left, we see an example of one that is similar in size to Glessner. It is located at Ashcroft House in the Cotswolds. On the right, a freestanding example at Rivington in Lancashire. Dovecotes came to America with the colonists. This rare surviving frame example located at Bowman's Folly in Virginia. It is now listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Although there is no mention of the dovecote in the correspondence between the Glessners and Richardson, it shows up in early design sketches for the house, indicating it was part of the plan almost from the beginning. The photograph on the right shows the dovecote as it appeared in 1887, while the house was still under construction. The Glessners had a pigeon house at their summer estate, The Rocks, as seen here. It was much larger than the dovecote on their Chicago house. The bottom photo, dating to the early 1920s, shows the various types of doves and pigeons that were housed in the Rocks Pigeon House. The dovecote at Glessner House consists of nine openings, which are 23 inches deep, representing the thickness of the granite and brick wall. In recent years, the openings have been covered over with wire screening, to prevent birds from entering. Here we see a view of the dovecote from the inside. In later years, after it was no longer used, asphalt shingles were tacked over the openings to seal them up, and a heating duct was run through one of the openings. The dovecote could be accessed from the upper level of the hayloft. Here we see the stairs and landing that the male servant would have used to get close to the nests. Each nest was covered over on the inside with a sliding wood door set into a track set above and below the opening. The servant would simply slide the door to one side to gain access to remove the eggs. It is believed that the Glessners only used the eggs. Squab occasionally shows up on the menus, but it would have been readily available from their butcher. Although the dovecote has not been actively used in decades, there are still remnants of the previous occupants, including accumulated nesting materials, eggshells, and even a partial skeleton, seen on the right. The dovecote continues to intrigue guests to this day. When asked, many people guess that the openings are some type of vent, not realizing that in the Glessner's day, some people opted to keep birds in structures built right into their homes, unlike smaller freestanding birdhouses we are familiar with today. This concludes our look at the dovecote. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about this unusual feature of Glessner House. Tune in next time when another secret will be revealed.